Welcome back, JD family. It's your girl Essence and your boy Jay. What up? What up? <laughs> so today we're bringing you a new recipe. It is Soul Food Sundays, and trust me, you do not want to miss this fire recipe. All right. Mm -hmm. But if this is your first time checking out our channel, hey cousins! Once you like, comment, and subscribe, you'll become family just like our other cousins out here. So go ahead and sit back and relax, and welcome back, cousins. <laughs> Alright y'all, so welcome back. What we got going on right now? I see a whole bunch of stuff that I don't know what the hell it is. Oh my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> sorry y'all, my husband is a mess. But like I said earlier, it's Soul Food Sundays, and I will be making my famous meatloaf. It is so so good. Oh, okay. And I'm also gonna be making cabbage, yellow rice, and candy yams. I love these candy yams. What is your favorite soul food? Uh, so I like fried pork chops, mm -hmm. yellow Dude. rice, right, and uh, okra and tomatoes. Yes, That's my favorite yes. One. I think I like mac and cheese yams. Yeah, mac and cheese. Is good I love too. dressing too, y'all. Do y'all love dressing? I love. It dressing. depends. It depends. So my auntie, she makes some dressing. She do. But she put she put a whole bunch of seafood, seafood in it. Yes. Like shrimp and what shrimp crab meat stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's really really good. Good point. That, yeah, her, the, her dressing is fire. Yeah, I don't eat her dressing. So you don't eat my dressing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It tastes like my auntie's. Okay, whatever. <laughs> But yeah, so this is what we're making today, y'all. So we have a few things on the table. So let's go ahead and start with the meat. Okay. So yeah, you want to show them? So we got three different types of meats right yes. here. Yes, I like to put <laughs> I like to put three different types of meat in my meatloaf. We have the hot turkey sausages. I feel like it brings a lot of flavor. In the middle, we have grass-fed beef, okay. and on the end, we have ground turkey, just regular ground turkey. Okay. Right. Yeah, so I'm going to mix all of that together. In my meatloaf, I like to add eggs. I have some bell pepper. Earlier, I chopped up the bell pepper. I'll show you the clip on the screen. But yeah. Bell pepper? So we have all oh, different... No. <laughs> so yeah, I, I chopped up the bell pepper earlier. So if you want to go ahead and show them that, babe. It's all different colors. I'm going to start all over again. I'm going to start all over again. I just showed them. <laughs> Okay, we'll start all because you dropped some of the floor. Uh, and then you was like, oh man. We, okay, go. Yeah, it's fine, babe. We live. Let's get it. Next, we have bread. So I like to put bread in my meatloaf. I pour a little bit of milk on top of it, mash it up, and mix it in with the meat. Or you can use breadcrumbs, and it's totally up to you. But I do like to add milk. My milk is right here. I like to add that because it gives it, I don't know, it just makes it really, really moist. I don't like no dry behind meatloaf, okay? I don't know about y'all, but I don't. So we have the yellow rice that Jay loves. We have yams. A whole bunch of different seasonings right here. So we're going to get into it. Don't worry. Make sure that y'all keep watching. And the first thing I'm going to fix is going to be the meatloaf. So let's go. So I like to put the bread in the bowl. And next I would like to add milk. So this is the milk I'm using. You don't have to use, of course, this brand. But I'm just using any milk. We actually don't buy milk in our household because we use almond milk or oat milk. But in our recipe, we do use regular milk for this. And I'm gonna be honest, y'all, I do not measure, but I'm gonna try my best to give you some measurements in the description below. But what I'm doing now is just crumpling it up. I'm gonna add a little bit more milk in there, if you can give that to me, babe. Thank you. Just a little bit more milk. You want it to be kind of moist. And this is what is going to give your meatloaf the moisture that it needs. So I'm just adding that. Mashing it together. Like that's clean. <laughs> and next we're going to add the meat. So once again, we have the hot turkey sausages. We have the grass-fed beef and the ground turkey. When it comes to meatloaf, I like to use my hands. If you don't, then you can use a spoon. But I like to get in there and just make love to my food. That's how it turns out good. You just 
mix it very well so the bread is incorporated in with the meat. All right, I think that looks good. So what I'm about to do now is just rinse my hands and then we're gonna start seasoning it. Now my hands are clean, I'm about to go ahead and add some minced garlic. You can add the one that is already minced up, which saves you a lot of time, or you can cut up your own. I love garlic, I don't know about y'all, so I'm just putting a good amount, but it's not going to be too much. Yes, and it's, I can smell that garlic, it smells really good. Next we're adding basil. So you can add any type of herbs, dry herbs that you like. I love thyme too, but I don't have any. If I did have thyme, I will add that too. So I'm just adding some basil. Next, I'm adding some paprika. And this is smoked paprika. Give it that smoke flavor. All right. I season very, very well. So I don't want y'all to be saying in, in the comments below cousin you put too much season in there because <laughs> when my food is not over seasoned i think it's seasoned like perfectly i think but next what we're going to do is we're going to add some linton onion beef soup i don't know if you heard of that before matter of fact i'm going to show you the box but this is it here i love the regular onion flavor but the beefy onion is so good so i'm about to add that in here it depends on how much meat you have that determines if you need to use the entire packet or half of it so i'm going to start out using half so that's just the what is that just the seasoning mm -hmm. the onions in there or something? yes i like to put that in our greens that's one of our secret ingredients put that in our greens i put it in a lot of our recipes so it is so good so what i just did i did half of it for right now Next, I'm going to add. Oh, look, this got meatloaf right here. Oh, that. does it? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Right there. Yeah, so I guess other people put it in meatloaf, but I put it in my greens too, y'all. It is so fire greens. So next, I'm about to add some barbecue sauce. This is not the barbecue sauce I usually get, but it was on sale, so I had to get it. <laughs> Sweet Baby Ray's. Yes. What I found out about Sweet Baby Ray's is that they have high fructose syrup in it, and that is not good. So I do not use it anymore. However, it tastes so good, but I just don't use it. Next, we have Worcestershire sauce. That is the correct way of saying it. I'm thinking. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. No, Worcestershire sauce. So I'm just adding a little bit. You don't want you don't want to put too much in there. Next, we're just adding some pink Himalayan salt. Alright. So what's the difference between regular salt and pink Himalayan salt? Pink Himalayan is actually a tad bit healthier than regular salt. It's healthy as like um, sea salt. So they're both healthy. Sea salt and pink Himalayan is, is really good. But the iodine white salt that's not good for you i just added some black pepper so they go way to the himalayas to get this i don't know y'all <laughs> i do not know i have a little bit of ketchup so i'm gonna add some ketchup in there just a little bit all right next i have the bell peppers i'm gonna add that in there and let me go ahead and chop up some onions. I did not show that earlier, but yes, you need onions in your meatloaf. So let me go ahead and chop that up real quick and I'll show you what that looks like. I went ahead and added some red onions. I love red onions in my recipes. So I went ahead and added that. Now I am beating two eggs. I'm about to go ahead and pour that in there. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my hands once again and just mix it all together. It smells so good. Yes, it does. Especially that garlic. That garlic set it off. Yes. So you can honestly look at it to see if it needs more bread or bread crumbs in it. So I think I need about two more slices of bread. It just all depends on how much meat you have. What I did off camera, I went ahead and added about two more bread slices. I put it in some milk and just added it in 
this bowl. I felt like it needed just a little bit more bread. Or like I said earlier, you can use breadcrumbs. So this is what it should look like. You should be able to put it together, but it still is moist. It's very moist. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a container, put this in there, and we're gonna put it in the oven. You wanna put it in the oven for 350 for about 45 to 50 minutes. And half of when it's almost done, that's when you're gonna make your glaze. I'll show you later how I make my glaze. You'll pour it on top and let it finish in the oven. So let's go ahead and put this in the container and I'll show you what that looks like. So I wanted to give you a little tip about meatloaf. If you wanted to see what it tastes like prior to putting it in the oven, because sometimes you don't know, right? You don't know if you have enough salt, enough garlic, um, enough herbs, pepper, etc. So you can pinch off a little piece of the meat, put it in a skillet on top of the stove, heat it up, cook it, and taste it and see if you need more seasoning. So I went ahead and tried a little bit on the stove and it tasted really, really good, but I felt like it needed a little bit more salt. And I forgot I had Slap Your Mama seasoning. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. If you've never tried it in your recipes, you have to add it. I get mine from Walmart and it does have salt in it. So I went ahead and added a little bit of that in my meatloaf mixture. And now I'm about to add it in my pan. So now that it's in my pan, I'm going to go ahead and just form it. The good thing about it, this pan already forms the meatloaf into the shape that I want. But I'm just patting it down a little bit so it can cover the corners. That's it, y'all. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it in the oven. So this is what the meatloaf will look like prior to to the oven all right guys so now we're gonna work on my candy yams my candy yams are so good and that's because I use two secret ingredients now when I tell you these ingredients y'all don't you go ahead and tell your other family members <laughs> but no I don't mind you sharing but these are the two ingredients that I like to use that are different from other recipes so I like to use ground ginger I use just a dash of that and it makes a big big difference i also like to use orange zest i don't have any oranges here at the house so i'm just going to use a little bit of orange juice and i use that sometimes if i don't have an orange so those are the two secret ingredients i like to use in my candy yams i'm about to go ahead and just peel my yams cut them up and then place them in a pot I love to cook yams in the oven, but I'm starting to like to cook them on the stove too. So yeah, I'm gonna cook them on the stove today and I'll show you how to do that. So let me go ahead and peel these yams, cut them up, and then I will be back and I'll show you when I add the rest of the ingredients in it. it up. I'm just going to let it do its thing. I'm going to put a 
top on it, not all the way, just halfway. And then I'm gonna let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes and then stir it and cook it until it's tender. So I'll show you about 15 to 20 minutes later and show you what it looks like. Right now our yams are looking really, really good. I went ahead and turned over the yams after 15 minutes. So I'm gonna let them go ahead and cook until they all get very tender. I sliced them not too, too thin, but not too thick because the thicker they are, the longer it takes for it to cook. And I ain't got time, I'm ready to eat. <laughs> so I think I need about, uh, let's see. Yeah, this one is pretty tender. So another part about 10 minutes or so, then I'm gonna cut off the stove and let it sit in this juice. So now we have our candy yams on the stove. You'll probably hear them bubbling in the background. I have them on medium. Next, we're gonna work on our cabbage. So with my cabbage, I do have one secret ingredient. I know that some people like to use vinegar in their cabbage, and I do too. However, I like to use this instead sometimes. This is the hot pepper rings. I like to use the rings, the peppers inside of it, chop it up and add it in my cabbage, and use the liquid as my vinegar. So if you see this in the store, go ahead and pick this up. So I'm about to go ahead and cut up my cabbage. I'm gonna be adding some beefy onion. I'm gonna use a half a pack of that. Red pepper flakes. Some bell peppers that I chopped up earlier. Adobo, I love adobo. If you do not use adobo, make sure you pick this up the next time you go to the grocery store. But if you have tried it before and you don't like it, then of course you can just use regular garlic powder. But what it is, it's just basically garlic powder along with salt and oregano in it. So it's, it's really good to me. I'm adding some black pepper. And earlier I had some chicken bouillon cubes, but I forgot I had this. Now this here is better than bouillon. <laughs> so it really is, it's really, really good. It's, um, if you wanna look in the inside, it's like a paste. And you've probably seen this before, but I got this big container from Costco. So I'm gonna use this instead and set up a bouillon cube. Slap your mama, of course, cause it just, it just makes your food so much better. I have some beef sausages. I don't eat pork, so instead of you know using bacon, I'm going to use beef sausages instead. Or you can use turkey sausages, smoked paprika, and that is really it. So I'm going to go ahead and chop this up. I'll show you how I chop it. First, I like to take that off. Then I like to cut it down the middle, cut it in fours, and as you see here, this is the core, so I'm just going to cut the core off and discard that. I'm going to do it for all four of these. After I do that, I have to do the other two, but I just want to show you real quick. I'll just go ahead and start cutting my cabbage. I like to eat my cabbage like this. Some people like to eat it like this. It is totally up to you. You just cut it how you like it. So I'm about to go ahead and chop it up really quick, and then I will show you what I do when I put it on the stove and when I'm adding my seeds.
as you see, the cabbage is looking amazing. I like my cabbage to still be slightly crunchy. Y'all let me know how y'all like your cabbage in the comments below. But I'm going to cook this probably for another three minutes. And then after that, it will be done. I taste it already, and it is seasoned perfectly. So the meatloaf is still cooking in the oven. I'm about to go ahead and make my glaze right now. Put it on top of the meatloaf and let the meatloaf cook for another 15 to 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do now is add some ketchup. And again, I don't measure. I'm just doing a good amount based on the size that I have. We have Worcestershire sauce. Barbecue sauce. I like more barbecue sauce than ketchup. And last but not least, I'm going to add some brown sugar. So what I'm going to do now is just mix this together. You can taste it to see if it needs more sugar, more ketchup, more sugar sauce. You make it how you like it. And what I like to do is just take a little bit on the back of my hand, or you get like a spoon. I don't need nothing, nothing else. That's it right there. So I'm about to go ahead and put it on top of the meatloaf. Come on, let's go in the oven. I'll show you what a meatloaf looks like. All right, so we just made the glaze. About to go ahead and pour it on top. This meatloaf looks so good. And it smells amazing. Yeah, I'm just gonna cook it for another 10 to 15 minutes. And then after that, it'll be done. You want the glaze to be really sticky. And I don't know about y'all, but I like a lot of glaze, so I'm gonna try to use all of this. Instagram and let us know so we can share